So it's a triangular 10. We'll come down here. There it is right there. And it says Formica C dash or 2 dash C dash 1 gray linen Formica Corporation, Cincinnati, Ohio. So we have documentation on all the pieces that are inside the plane. Wow. It's kind of kind of neat to do that. Now here we have pictures of what the inside of the plane is going to look like. Um, this is a crew compartment way up front, navigator's compartment. This one here is the galley. And then we come down to what they call the Pullman room. So it, is, it looks like this during the day. And when you go to bed, the bed folds out of the ceiling and you have places to sleep. And back over here is uh, Mrs. Eisenhower's lounge. And that's in the very back of the airplane. And then you have the presidential room itself. <laughs> and we will go in and look at these things. All but right. before we do, I want you to step over here and I'll show you why I do, why I have my job. So there are pieces inside the airplane that are made of wood. All right, this is a return air duct. It still has the original part number on it. All right, and so I've taken it apart to reproduce it in aluminum so that we don't have any problems with it burning. Because a lot of the inside of the airplane was wood. So this is your job security. Yes, yes, <laughs> very much so. And again, if you, if you come around here, walk around that way, I'll show you. Um, the inside of the personnel door, this, this was all wooden. So I remanufactured it in a non-burnable plastic material okay. and putting uh, the, the rubber on it so that it's nice and cushioned. And then this will get headliner on it and go back on the original door. To, uh, to look like it was when I was in here. And there's the original door all rebuilt. That's what I do. <laughs> you just, in other words, you come here and play every day. I oh, mean, yes. come on, Bill. Yes, I do, and they pay me. Yeah, and you get paid for it. Yep. That's almost, almost as good as teaching. Almost. <laughs> you will get some attitude from it. So before we actually even go in, here's a, an interesting one. There's two holes here on the left side. There's one hole on the right side of the airplane in almost the same position. And those were for rafts. In case the airplane were to crash in the water, the pilot could pull a little lever up there and the doors would open and the rafts would come out. Kind of neat. That's neat. There's a lot of work in progress going on in the airplane. The cargo door, you can see the hinge, it goes all the way across. See where it separates. This cargo door was was damaged, and it's years in the desert and that kind of stuff. So we took all the skin off of it and reskinned it. Put new uh, new 32 thousandths aluminum and shot it all back on. Know, the floors will creak and make noise and bend, and you won't fall through. <laughs> but uh, as we go, this is back toward Mrs. Eisenhower's space back here. But if you look up in the ceiling right here, you can see wood. Yeah. The actual wood. This wall and the walls back there are all made of wood. And those all have to come out. You, you can go on back if you want. Yeah, back there, just beyond that bulkhead right there, on your right is two sinks. And then that is what they call into the hell hole in the back of the airplane. Yep. Yeah, and there was a bathroom here, and then back that way was a closet. And in between the two is a drinking fountain. <laughs> right here. Yep. 
and so you the Dixie cup dispenser was up above you got your water and then you had the trash can <laughs> so, yeah so I'm in the process of remaking all this right right now this in the door I'm working on the door right so this was a place for luggage um, it does have another shelf that goes across and space above it. It does have a, a cabinet that goes in here. It goes from ceiling to floor, uh -huh. and the cabinet continues down below. So uh, that's that's what I'm doing right now. And, uh, this is into the presidential space. So this this was the uh, the state room. Right. And the stateroom had wood going from ceiling to floor all the way down. And then it had a little bit of insulation on that and then headliner on top of that. So all that had to come out. And so what I did is put uh, a plastic to represent the wood. And this is a non-burnable plastic. And then it's fastened on to the same place as the wood was. So how long did this set in the desert before you? Oh boy. Which time? Yeah, really? Is that what that? Yeah, yeah. It, it sent, I think it actually spent more, almost more than 30 years in the desert. So, but it, it, was, it was pretty bad. And so this was original. And it was flown here, though. We, we took nine months and crews of guys going out and back and out and back, fixing it. it did so, so it's pliable. Yeah. So now this, uh, President Eisenhower's seat was right here. Mrs. Eisenhower. Now, is this the original side. floor? Yes, this is the original floor. Wow. But actually, his chair said. Yep, there, right there. there that okay. One, that one. But uh, this, this rack here was actually where his table came out, this whole thing. It had a single pedestal leg, and that's what those little holes are. But uh, his phone sat here, and there's the original <laughs> piece of acrylic that his phone sat on. Isn't that cool? So uh, I was able to rebuild it, um, same trim, original trim, yep. the buttons are his, those are original, there are even the two black buttons which turned on lights above the table. So all this gets covered in a dark uh, reddish brown uh, leather on, down here on this, everything you see that's green down below, and then about, from about three inches down to the floor is uh, Naugahyde. Okay. So, and Mrs. Eisenhower's space, she had a, a spot for her magazines. Um, she could serve coffee off of the, the, this is not the original, this is just cut from the plans. And the one in the back, same way. So, as we go through, this is the first, what we call Pullman room. So this had uh, four seats on each side. So it sleep eight people. And uh, when it was time to, uh, for nighttime, these, these pieces here, they had locks in them and they would unlock and they would fold down and make a bed. And they slept two people on top on each side, two people on bottom on each side. Cozy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one unique thing about the airplane is, is you look right here, there's about three quarters of an inch. Yeah. As you go to that end, it opens up to about an inch and a half. Right. And this whole airplane is getting wider and then goes back together. It also gets taller and gets lower. The, the worst part about it is, is all the fasteners that hold everything to the ceiling had chunks of wood above them, and they were all different sizes. So that, that was rather Yeah, yeah rather nice fun. challenge. Yeah, so this one is the only active working bed in plane. And uh, I was able to build this from photographs. The actual plans for this were destroyed. Um, it's identical to the original. And so it has the same amount of spring. It looks like camp meeting beds. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> you're right. It, but camp meeting bed doesn't have a, a headboard uh, and a footboard. Footboard. And a little fancy mechanism to, to do that. Or. The, uh, you can see the articulating arms here. Right. So those those were a challenge because those also we did not have plans for. 
uh, took an engineer, two engineers all summer long to figure out how they work from uh, the computer models and all that. And I'll show you how the bed actually works. Now the bed is not fastened to the wall. All right. All right. But you can't pull it off the wall either. So, but it's as easy as breaking it loose and she goes right on. Clever people, these Chinese. <laughs> what now? Clever people, these Chinese. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. It took a little time. It took me a couple months to make that. But now we're uh, kind of stepping back in time a little bit. This was a forward bathroom. Um, neat thing about the forward bathroom is the vanity that was here. I have only a little piece of it, but I was given the vanity out of uh, General MacArthur's airplane. And it matches. It's the same thing. This side here was, uh, yeah, actually you can see some of the wood. Yep. There. And this was for luggage area. There were several shelves in there. And then uh, up in here is the galley. Watch your step there. So this was all stainless steel galley in here. And we do have the galley, which is nice. So, and then over on this side, there was a refrigerator. A uh, butcher block countertop and a cabinet with a sliding door. Uh, this also had a <laughs> yeah, drinking drink fountain, fountain. And it also held the turn mechanism to put your gear down and your flaps down in case the motor stopped working. So uh, the other little one right here, let's see if I can get up. Yeah, it's where you keep the sticks that you put down in the tanks yeah. to tell how much fuel you have. Uh, yeah. But now as we go through here, oh yeah, the doorbell <laughs> and a light. As we go through, now this side here on the right was the other, the crew compartment, where the fifth bed was in the ceiling. Now on this side is navigation. So yeah, I keep that. In. So above here is where the sextant was. And uh, you could look up through uh, a dome and look at the stars and figure out your direction, just like you would do on the sea. Wow. And then there was a spot down through the floor over here. It goes all the way down. And that's where a, a thing called a drift meter was. So if you move over just a, a little bit further, you'll see the hole all the way down. Yep. There it is. Yeah where the drift meter goes in and the drift meter would allow you to look through this device and tell whether the wind how far the wind was blowing you off course and then you had instruments here to tell you your speed altitude you know whether you were going up or down you know vertical altitude compass all that just to be able to tell the pilot how to correct some of this stuff was communication <laughs> throughout the airplane and then you can go into the uh, cockpit. So on the left, and there is the original Collins radio for uh, the communication. All right. And then uh, you got the pilot and co-pilot seats. And then you come around here. This is the engineer station. And our guy is uh, actually rebuilding it. You can see all the wiring he's done already. Lots and lots of wiring. Now, real important is look at the green shelf there and those papers on that shelf are original and they are to tell the engineer the settings on his engines for different altitudes and different um, you know, configurations that he needed to set up in. Wow. Very nice. All right, Ramblin' Rusty signing off. I'm going to take some still pictures. Check you all later.